You mentioned you're a naturopathic doctor and a midwife, and that was what called you to get involved and to be one of the five citizens. What was it about that? What are you seeing in those areas of naturopathic uh, health and care and being a midwife? What are you seeing that has you be involved in this cause? Okay, well, first of all, I was a midwife for 20 years. I still carry through with that, but I don't practice. Mm -hmm. But I do take care of women and children. I do have a naturopathic pediatric practice. So as people would, as patients are coming in to see me, the first thing I ask them, where do you live on Maui? And the sickest people I see live in North Kihei. And what is about North Kihei that has you concerned? Well, North Kihei is where Monsanto's main farms are. And we also have fog from the volcano that comes in from the Big Island. And we also have cane burning there that's very intense, that affects respiratory and health overall. So many, many layers. And we also have chemtrails. The, the geoengineers love Maui because of our trade winds, and they're experimenting constantly in our skies and poisoning us this way also. So the people in North Kihei have many, many, many layers of toxicity that they're in their environment every day. So I see children that are, have respiratory issues. I have people that have moved to the island and never been sick, and now they're completely collapsing. They have asthma. They've never had that. They have chronic fatigue. You know, and it's, it's, I almost know where they come from when they come in. And the other thing is my generation, the baby boomers, I'm seeing more and more friends who are having cancerous afflictions and dying. So I'm seeing a lot more cancer from people who have lived an organic life, a spiritual life, a balanced life. But we see unseen things that are affecting us and the toxicity level is getting so high that we are collapsing underneath it. And are there statistics that are available to the public to see that the levels are increasing? Is there a Department of Health that is tracking this? No, no, it's very under the rug type situation. Our Environmental Protection Agency is turning their back. They're not doing their job. Um, that's why the citizens have stepped forward because we're not happy with what's going on and we don't see action to, to come forward to uh, face these people and say, you need to prove that this is safe. Because in Hawaii, not just on our island, but we have open air experiments is what we call it. We have big fields that are sprayed five times a day with glyphosates and now they're adding more and more chemicals and more pesticides because what they were using aren't working so they keep making these cocktails. We have no idea the health effects of those. And they don't have to report these? No. What, what types of chemicals and when they're spraying? So you can't even close your window on a certain day because they'll let you know that they're going to be spraying them. You can't, do, you can't take any preventative action, is that true? That's true. With the cane burning, you can to a certain degree. You can be on a list to be called and notified when the burns are going to happen. Mm -hmm. But those usually start in the middle of the night. Mm. And the other issue with the cane burning is that they spray it with a defoliant that's very close to Agent Orange, and then they put it on fire. It dries out the, the green cane, and then they're able to burn it. So not only are they burning it, but you're breathing the chemicals that have just been sprayed on that and been used on that. And it's a very archaic way of doing it. It's a very third world. There's very few modern you know, countries that do this. And what I feel is behind it is you know, the missionaries that came here that were given land and came in to, to civilize the Hawaiians. They were given land and they're still in power and nobody messes with them. And, and why do you think they're not being voted out? Is that the whole issue of not, people not wanting to vote? Uh, fear, fear of losing jobs. Mm. That's always the ticket for the other side. Oh, if you vote us out, if you stop cane burning, if you stop spraying, you're, you're all our Monsanto people will be losing jobs, our Hawaiian people will be losing jobs. But what they don't realize is that there's sustainable alternatives to what they're doing. We could grow hemp, they could do farming, um, Farmer, you know, people that are working for the cane um, organization, they can have, we can do cooperative farms, they don't have to use pesticides. Mm -hmm. There is a bigger vision. Yeah. It's just, you know, how many generations have to die off before we can move forward. Yeah, and you're sure about that? You're sure that these 
health issues are coming from these areas where there's a, a toxic Absolutely. overload. Absolutely. You have no doubt about that, even though you haven't seen... Well, I've done research uh, on it. Okay. I've okay. read what's in the cane burning. I've mm -hmm. read what glyphosates do, mm -hmm. especially Roundup. Even if you just live on a small piece of land here in Hawaii and your neighbor's spraying all the time, it's not just Monsanto. It's the, it's the hardware stores that are selling all the Roundup also, because Roundup, the glyphosate aspect of it, will interrupt hormones, disrupt hormones. It will disrupt your gut flora. It will affect your serotonin pathways in your brain. It will also chelate, remove macro and, my, and um, micro minerals from your body, leaving you very depleted and causing a lot of infertility, also causing birth defects. It, it goes on and on and on. And these ha this has been proven. There's been scientific papers that have been proven, whereas Monsanto says that they've done studies, but they only do it for three months. Right. And then they stop and they say, we're safe. And then they claim that it's safe. Right. So we're only asking for independent studies to prove that their pesticides are not unsafe. How do you not get completely outraged seeing this and knowing this? What is it that you do? How do you go on? What I do is teach and educate people how to clean out their bodies mm -hmm. and how to be a, a compassionate warrior to an activist. So I've rechanneled. You have to rechannel because there's an, there's no way that I feel this could be overcome by acting the same way as they do, of accusations, of anger, mm -hmm. of pointing fingers, blame. No, that paradigm is not going to work, and that's not who I am. Why should the rest of the world take notice of what's happening here in Maui and, and in Hawaii? Well, the rest of the world is already taking notice. We've had people from Sweden, we've had people from France coming here interested in what we're doing because it is happening everywhere. This is a, like a plague mm -hmm. that's going over the world. And many countries are pushing Monsanto out and closing the door. And I am so grateful. So as we come together as a community, we can also come together globally and make a difference. So that's why it's so important that we don't back down, that we continue with a compassionate political activism. Look at Gandhi what he did, mm -hmm. the mountains he moved through his um, compassionate activism. Beautiful. And our planet, our planet is suffering. Mm -hmm. And if we don't speak up for it, we won't be here much longer. Yeah. The, the young people I see are hungry to help and to restore the planet and to learn how to live in cooperation with the earth. Yeah. There is a respect. yearning to be sustainable right, to, to have the knowledge to be self-sufficient, to be able to grow food, to be able to know how to live with nature and to live compassionately with other people. And when a company like Monsanto claims to be a sustainable agriculture uh, company, what do you have to say about that? That's very difficult to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> but I also know it's double speak and it's propaganda and I just let it flow off. Right, yeah. Yeah, and we okay. do have systems on our island and people on our island that are coming together making plans for sustainability. You know, in my front yard, it's all a garden, edible landscaping. So when my patients come to see me, they have, they see the garden, they see the fruit trees, they know that they can do that too. If we all grow food and share it, what a mo more wonderful world that would be. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your compassion and your wisdom and, and being a part of this cause. You're an inspiration to us. And you too. Thank you.